A few weeks ago, I produced a video looking at the results of this year's World Happiness Report, an annual report published by the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. The idea of looking at happiness as a proxy for development originated in the country of Bhutan and was codified by the United Nations in Resolution 65-309 of 2011, which recognizes that gross domestic product indicator by nature was not designed to and does not adequately reflect the happiness and well-being of people in a country. And it therefore invites member states to pursue the elaboration of additional measures that better capture the importance of happiness and well-being in development with the view to guiding their public policies. The Gross National Happiness Report was intended to be precisely such a measure. But a viewer asked how all of this plays out in the Kingdom of Bhutan, the country that originated the idea of happiness as a proxy for development. I thought it was an interesting question, so I'll take a first effort at answering it. Hey everyone, I'm Noah Zerbe. I'm a professor of global politics at California State Polytechnic University Humboldt. Welcome to IR Explainer, where I explore the theories and concepts behind current events in global politics. Bhutan is a small landlocked country located high in the Himalaya Mountains on the border of China and India. Like Tibet, Bhutan is predominantly a Buddhist country and that Buddhism informs much of its people's outlook. Bhutan's King Wangchuk originated the concept of gross national happiness in the 1970s. While he ruled Bhutan from 1974 until his abdication of the throne in 2006, Wangchuk contended that gross national happiness was a better measure of development than gross domestic product, the total value of goods and services produced by an economy. By the mid-1980s, Bhutan was using happiness as the primary yardstick for measuring progress. Indeed, a decree issued by the king in 1986 directed the country's National Planning Commission to ensure that the basis for evaluation of achievements of the sixth plan is to see whether people enjoy happiness and comfort. From this perspective, broader economic measures were at best subordinate to or secondary to the goals of achieving happiness and contentment. Bhutan has invested a lot of time and energy in assessing levels of gross national happiness. Every five years, the government commissions a randomized survey of the population, asking thousands of households a series of questions to get at nine domains of happiness. Far more expansive than the Gallup survey, Bhutan's survey includes questions like how often respondents meditate or pray, how much money and time they donate to their communities, how many hours they sleep and work, and even how often they quarrel with friends and family or if they trust their neighbors. And by this measure, Bhutan has had some pretty dramatic successes. Despite being one of the poorest countries in the world with a gross domestic product of about $3,400, placing it around 153rd place in the world, Bhutan's happiness places it closer to 90th overall. Though I would note that Bhutan believes that the Western Gallup-based report is not sufficiently sophisticated or holistic and that it fails to capture Bhutan's true level of happiness. But for all its successes, Bhutan has also seen some failures. Unemployment, particularly youth unemployment, is high and increasing. Inequality and environmental degradation are also on the rise. And the country faces dramatic challenges resulting from climate change, which could melt the country's glaciers and undermine hydroelectric energy production, its primary source of energy, and its most important export and foreign exchange earner. Increased exposure to global markets is also raising concerns about cultural shifts and westernization as the country's youth adopts increasingly westernized habits, clothing, and lifestyles. For all of this, Bhutan's embrace of gross national happiness as a replacement for more mainstream measures of economic development remains a fascinating example of efforts to rethink the nature, meaning, and goals of progress. That's it for now. If you're interested in learning more, check out my other videos on the topic, which I'll link to in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to catch future explainers as they're released. Please leave any questions you have about this video or any suggestions for future explainer topics in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a good day. Bye.